Welcome to Madison City Channel's Know Your Candidates interviews, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Dane County. I'm your interviewer, Gail Bliss. I would like to introduce Nikki Conklin, running for Alder from District 9. As we begin, please tell our viewers a bit about how your educational, vocational, and civic experience have prepared you for the position and why you decided to run for Alder. Hello. Um, let me tell you why I decided to run. Um, for the last 10 years, I have lived in the Wexford Ridge neighborhood, and I've also been involved with the Lucia Community Education Center just as long. I started off volunteering there. I became a staff member, a mayor course member, and I even sat on the board of directors. While doing so and being involved with my community center, I also have put myself through school. I graduated in May with my bachelor's degree in human services. Um, I also got my associate's degree in human services from Madison College in 2016. So with going to school, being involved in the community center, um, I've had lots of opportunities. And one of the opportunities I received was being able to be a part of the program called Neighborhood Organizing Institute. And that is a leadership development program for grassroots leaders, advocates, and community organizers like myself. It really lays down the steps of organizing, the foundation needed to um, be able to go out and organize. And I actually was able to organize the residents here in Wexford Ridge. And we got in front of the property manager of Meridian. And we actually were able to stop cars from being towed. Um, they had put a lot of barriers in place in order for people to get a parking pass. They were making it so uh, you couldn't park in the visitor parking overnight. And so I didn't like those things. And I really felt that I needed to advocate for people who couldn't advocate for themselves. So that's what I did. Um, I was able to get residents together, get in front of Jason Haig now, and we actually got the towing to stop. So that right there showed me that there is success in people having power in their voice. And we all have power. So we all, the more voices we have, the more power we have. Thank you. Question one, what issue or issues have you identified as being of primary concern to the residents of your district? And how would you approach tackling them? Well, the issues that I have found most concerning in my district would be quality affordable housing, equity and justice, and safety for all. Um, what I will do is I will fight for fair and equal access to quality affordable housing, along with uh, housing first models, and I will also fight for tenants rights. I will work hard to stop PFAS from contaminating our water. Um, for equity and justice, I plan to support policing in a new way with collaborations um, with mental health advocates and professionals. And I also want to support more educational opportunities to close the opportunity gaps. And lastly, for safety for all, um, I will bring focus on community building and engagement while investing in communities to bring down crime rate. And I will also advocate for fair and equal access to healthcare. Thank you. Question two, there will be an advisory referendum on the ballot in April about the number of, about a number of modifications to the city council, including changing the number of members, making it full time and changing the term of office. Which of these ideas being advanced do you embrace? Why or why not? I actually embrace all these ideas. Um, as just a newcomer starting out, um, District 9 is district. So um, thankfully right now I'm in a position where I, I'm working part-time so I can really dedicate all my time to um, running my campaign to be Alder of District 9. But um, I know that if the board did go down to 10 members, um, that would make it pretty hard on alders to properly serve their constituents and have the time and the energy to do so. Um, so I think that they should keep it at 20, but I also know that just this little bit of time that I have been doing this, that you do need to dedicate a lot of time and have um, that time and energy 
to actually be worth something for your constituents and actually put in the work to get the changes done needed. So I think making it full time, keeping the 20 alders so everyone can properly serve their community would be the best thing um, for the city council. Thank you. Question three, homelessness, evictions, and lack of affordable housing are vexing problems for Madison that seem to have been exacerbated in the time of COVID-19. What ideas would you advance to support or support to help solve these problems? Well, um, I think you said it exactly. The, um, the pandemic has really amped things up. And I think that we really need to focus on uh, making sure people have their basic needs met, um, housing, education, employment, healthcare. If folks have their basic needs met, then they are healthy. And when you have a healthy community, you have a safe community. So one hand washes the other one. If we make sure that everyone has what they need, um, then people are able to go on out and thrive and empower and uplift other members. And then in return, we all rise up. You know, when we lift one person up, we're all rising up to bring everyone up to the same level. We want to make sure it's fair playing grounds. And I think um, statistics have shown time and time again that crime rate will go down when uh, people, when you invest into the community. Like I said, making sure that your basic needs are met, then people are more likely to be happier and healthier. And in return, they make your community happier and healthier. So we all thrive when everyone's doing well and we have our basic needs met. Thank you. Question four. With the selection of a new police chief and the creation of a community oversight board, there is a lot of attention focused on policing and criminal justice, both from the perspective of racial equity in law enforcement and the concern of many citizens that, in fact, crime, especially car thefts and home burglaries, is increasing and that the police response is inadequate. How would you deal with these concerns? Well, for one, I would be fully um, on board with having the independent monitoring and the civilian oversight board, um, because I feel like the that the community needs to be a set of non-biased folks who the force has to answer to. You know, they're supposed to be serving and protecting us, the community. So we should have an input on who we might feel is the safest or best qualified to do that job. And so um, I really think that when we have community control over the police, that means that they answer to us. And so things are more less likely to be overlooked. You know, people are really going to be wanting the answers to their questions. And so that makes it more likely for the police maybe not to do things that they shouldn't do when they know that they have people backing them up. Instead, when they have to bring it to the community, um, they really need to be on their P's and Q's and that might help, in fact, combat some of the police issues that we're having. And I really think that we need to um, shift funds away from the police departments and put them into more collaborations um, like community funded programs, uh, like CAHOOTS in Oregon, I'm sure you've heard of that, um, where we really are sending the mental health advocates out as first responders to mental health crises. It's important to have the right people in the right profession to send them out to the right job because in fact, sometimes we know that the police can do more harm than good when you're dealing with mental health crises. So it's important to have the right people for the right job. So collaborating with mental health advocates to put them as first responders in the right jobs that need responding to for mental health crises. Thank you. Question five. Madison businesses of all kinds have been severely stressed during the past year. What, if anything, would you propose to support business revitalization? Well, I, I would support that. I think the, that small businesses need um, funding. They need um, money to help 
get them back up to being thriving businesses that they once were before the pandemic hit. Um, unfortunately, you know, many people have lost their jobs. You know, kids are at home now. So a lot of things have changed, but unfortunately, yes, the businesses are taking the hardest hits in, in order to be a thriving um, economically coping city, we need to make sure that they have their needs met again, you know, making sure that they have what they need and that could be monetary um, needs. So we need to really try to make room for them in the budget to get them what they need in order for them to give back to us. You know, if they have what they need, then we're able to survive, to have our basic needs met, to be a thriving, healthy community and which in turn will equal a safer community. Question six, what measures should Madison take to increase our city's environmental sustainability? Well, I think um, what the city should do in order to make Ma Madison more sustainable is really be forward thinking as Madison is rapidly growing um, and the population is increasing we need to make sure that folks have the proper access that they need um, to get to jobs, to get to doctor visits, to get to shops, um, and to even get to schooling. So in doing so, I think we need to make sure that we electrify the system to make it more environmentally safe, to help combat climate change. And also um, we need to increase public transportation or public transit, so it's more equitable, equitable for everybody. And then also, um, if we do that, we need to make sure that there's more electric vehicles on the road. Also with the electric vehicles, we need to have the electric charging stations and all those things um, will really help bring down uh, climate change and help combat those issues. And just a, a little side note that transportation is 41% of the CO2 emissions. And if you combine the residential and the commercial energy, that's 48% of our CO2 emissions from our buildings. So we need to focus on renewable energy and energy efficiency. Thank you. Question seven, on what committee or committees would you like to serve and why? Okay, well, I got a, I got a quite a few of them. So <laughs> um, some of the committees that I've been looking at, I would really like to be a part of the affirmative action or equal opportunities for employment, tenant, landlord issues. I would also like early childhood, um, the education committee, the CDBG, so the community development block grants. And lastly, um, the Community Service Committee. And I think um, the one that I would most, most like to be a part of, I think because this is what got me here, would be the Community Development Block Grants. Um, they fund neighborhood centers operating within the community base of nonprofit organizations to improve the quality of life for low to moderate income people and neighborhoods. Thank you. What would you like to say to the viewing audience as we complete this interview? I would like to say that um, I'm running because District 9 needs a new young voice to represent the most marginalized in our community and bring power to all the folks of District 9. With my neighborhood organizing skills, I will be able to effectively advocate and communicate with all my constituents. As a community activist, mother, first generation college graduate and deeply rooted neighborhood leader, I have experienced firsthand the issues that need tackling in this district. As a black mother with a degree in human services, living, working and raising her children in this district, the most segregated district in the most segregated state, I have the experiences that no other candidate has and I have the skills needed to bring change to this district. I want to thank Nikki Conklin for speaking with us and the viewing audience for taking the time to know your candidates. As with every election, please vote. 
On behalf of Madison City Channel and the League of Women Voters of Dane County, I thank you for joining us.